Oh, uh, hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Crime Pays, but Bodney doesn't. Now you might be asking yourself, why am I showing you this sphincter, this this cesspool of human development? You don't want to see this. I mean, this could be anywhere, right? Anywhere in the United States at the lower latitudes. You know, you get your horrible resorts, a bunch of cars, concrete, palm trees. They're obsessed with palm trees, even though they're not native, because it gives the illusion the uh, cosplay effect of uh, paradise. But anyway, I was just here because I had to go. I get, this is the only spot they got the nice taqueria to go in there. They got it in the holiday and they got a taco palenque in there. They're not paying me to say that, but hopefully I can schmooze a fucking burrito or a taco off them later. Anyway, I'm in South Padre Island, Texas, okay? Uh, a place where so much bad dancing has gone on. Just on this little strip of land, it's amazing. You know, you got, you got the bay to the west, you got the ocean to the east, and this strip of land goes up a few miles. There's been so much bad dancing here, it's unbelievable. Lots of Jimmy Buffett fans, lots of uh, really corny restaurants, bars, etc. But there's actually a, a sliver of the native habitat left from the Texas Gulf Coast, and we're gonna go check it out. So I gotta get the fuck out of here. Actually, we had to go steal some ice from their ice machine too, which is what hotels are good for. You can always get some free stuff. You know, just gotta walk in with confidence. All right, let's 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 uh, hit the road. See what, see what else they got going on. Yeah, so nice. We'll start off with this pale of foxy. It looks like a uh, pale of foxy at Texana. Look at those. God damn, look at those. Look at those floors. Get up in there. Look at that. Look at all those black anther tubes. You hear the grackle in the background? Pink styles and very long corolla lobes on each one of those individual corollas right there. And those uh, fused anther, anther tubes. Of course, the anthers are in the inside of that tube, pointing in. And these are in a female phase for the most part. See how the styles are open. They push that pollen out when they come out. Over here, you got the indigofera miniata. Where the shit did it go? There it is. Just a tiny little pea. See that? See how that banner flips up like that? That back pedal, that posterior pedal flips up like that. The calyx lobes, the sepals are very long. Banner wings and keel, because we are talking pea family flowers. Fabordier pea subfamily flowers. All right, just a diminutive little shit. See, there's those leaves, those pinnate leaves. See, one on either side of that rackies. Okay, see, now we're on a beach, nice. I don't know where they're going. I don't know, what are you, what are you guys throwing over there? Jack. You know, they're just, they just wander off. I don't know, what are you thinking about? They, they, they go up to Randos and try to get them to give them treats and, you know, it's whatever. Anyway, you could see we're right here where they put all the, all the resorts in the condos. I can't help but wonder how many frat boys with rich parents have gotten alcohol poisoning inside these, uh, these very resorts right here. Probably quite a few, all right? You know, they drink too much shitty vodka. They had to be carted away in an ambulance, you know, puking their guts out, and then they go on to business school. Anyway, let's look at some of the plants that are growing here. We can get a nice idea of uh, the habitat as it existed before the resorts went up. Right there, you can see Croton punctatus, a member of the quote-unquote Spurge family, Euphorbiaceae. A lot of the plants here are pan-tropical, so they exist all around the globe at uh, lower latitudes, uh, probably because the seeds are uh, transported by ocean currents. You know, so uh, that's another one over here. This is uh, Ipomea prescapri. Right over here, we'll step over these guys. We're going to get back, you don't worry. This is a species of uh, Ipomea. Press Capri, which again you get you get on coastal areas uh, all over the globe at the uh, at the right uh, latitude. You could see look at look at the indentation on it too. Look at the veins on it. Look at the veins. You get those those the red rackies, you know, glabrous leaves, kind of waxy, and then this very prominent vein. Quite beautiful, the veins on it, huh? This is a you get Western Diamondbacks out here too. Big fucking rattlesnakes. They're not gonna bother you unless you start fucking with them, of course. But it is interesting to think that you get those, uh, you know, those pit vipers out here. You wouldn't normally think so. Lots of ticks too. So here's that Ipomea. See, it's got those folded leaves, all right? And they just, a lot of these plants are dune plants. So they're specialists on dunes. They can adapt to the shifting sand dunes, the shifting topography. So they can adapt to being buried. They can adapt to being swept around, all right? They got very long trailing uh, rhizomes and with the shit. Look, see, here's that Cannavalia rosea. Look at that flower, see that? Get the state. Look, I pulled, the, I pulled that the wing petal and part of the keel aside to show you those, those uh, anthers in there. You can see the uh, little banana-shaped style 
which is connected to the fruit, the legume fruit. See, there's a flower that uh, hasn't been uh, mutilated yet. Look in there. Look, you could look inside that keel. See that? So pollinators got to crawl in that thing and, you know, putch around for a little bit, crawl around and get the pollen all over them with the shit. Crawl out, get that banner petal reflex. And look at the calyx. No hairs, but like some some scales almost. You got like weird scale like uh, trichomes on there. And then, of course, you got the triffid leaves. Pretty leathery and coriaceous. Ooh. Looks like... Uh, and there's that the there's the old fruits. Okay, so there's the there's the uh, the seeds of that cannavalia. So you can see how these get around. The whole fruit, the whole legume fruit, seems kind of floaty. See how it's got all the papery shit in there? And then of course those seeds, they got a thick seed coat, and they could just take take a beating. You, know, you see that? You see where the placenta attached to the seed? See that little spot right there, that little scar? It's called the hilum. See that? Like a little bean. You see that in a bean? Think of like a black bean or a pinto bean. They got the hilum on there. That's the scar where the placenta attached to the to the, uh, to the seed. And here's that uh, species of croton. Croton? Crouton? Whatever the shit you want to call it. Let's take a close-up look at those flowers. Oh, yeah, there you go. Look at those distinct spade-shaped anthers. Many of them pouring out of a little cup. The whole the whole tiny little flower, and you got about... So you got like 15 flowers in that inflorescence right there, that spike. The whole, uh, the whole flower is just covered in little scales and trichomes and what the shit. And you could see, look at it, look like a, like velvet. Like she get, like it's just a velvety stem. Look at it. There's many species in the genus Croton and a lot of them grow in these sandy areas. You know, a lot of them are really tolerant of the, uh, the heat, the heat and aridity. But in this case, it's humid as a nutsack because we're right, th right here in the ocean. And look at this. Remember the nightshade family, all right? Colloquially known as uh, the golden berries, you know? It's a relative of this that they sell for way too much money. I think you get like 20 of them for five bucks or something in a little package in the uh, high-end grocery stores. Uh, the grocery stores with the high-end produce. Anyway, this is Physalis. This is Physalis cinerascens. Look at the calyx. You got all those trichomes, kind of velvety. You got a bug, uh, you got a little beetle. Uh, eating the petals on this one. Let's check out another one. You can see they got pendant flowers right there and uh, Semi-succulent and adapted to the dune lifestyle. Look at all that. Look how look how glandular it is Trichomes and glands on the leaves on the stems on the calyx even on the petal. Look at it Love a nightshade though and look at those anthers five little yellow bananas con duplicate bananas Just release it upon with a style right in the middle receptive a uh, pap and then you get that nice little uh, nice little black uh, pattern on the uh, diffused perianth right there diffused corolla you know i'll be honest i never wanted to go to the beach i've always been pretty bored by them because of stuff like this what are you gonna do you're just gonna you're just gonna lay there you want to take selfies and you know i don't know i don't need to do any of that shit but then when i started learning about dune plants it became it became a little bit more interesting so you got to have some interesting adaptations to make it here. Adaptations to salt, adaptations to high humidity levels, and uh, adaptations to rapidly drying out since you're growing on sand. Oh, this is an interesting one. Cacile geniculata. It's a mustard. It's a succulent mustard. Let's see if we can get one with a flower on it. There we go. Gulf Coast sea mustard. You prick. Look at that. See, indicative of the brassica family, you got your four petals. You got that uh, those distinct sepals right there. See those green sepals, kind of uh, kind of folded, kind of cupped. Four little cupped green sepals, and you got six. If you were to dissect that flower, you'd have six stamens in there. And then there's that fruit. See a little salique, huh? A superior ovary because it's above the point of attachment or where the petals attached. See that? You can see the old abscission scar where the petals and sepals were, but it's succulent. Because it's growing, I mean, it's growing on sand. So anytime you get a mutation, it pushes you a little bit closer towards having physiological succulents. You'd uh, outcompete the individuals in your population that didn't have that uh, allele or that mutation or gene, whatever, however you want to think of it. Allele is just a copy of a gene. And so everything here, or a lot of stuff here, unrelated, has evolved succulents. All right? Or like this croton, that velvety, that velvety... Uh, leaf texture 
to keep all that transpiration inside as well as reflect some of the ultraviolet light since you're growing so exposed to the sun and what the shit. Oh, look at that. I see betalane pigments. Sesuvian portulacastrum. Isoaceae, the ice plant family. All right, Caryophyllales is the order. That's why we got the betalane pigments in there. That's why we got the succulents. Look at it. A juicy. You could probably put that in your mouth and eat it, huh? I think most of the members of Isoaceae you can. I don't think any of them are too toxic. Of course, so don't sue me if I'm wrong. There you go. Look at it. Look at it. Succulents in there. One of the one of the native members of Isoaceae. Only native because again, they're pan tend to be pan tropical, so they occur, uh, you know, anywhere that their seeds can get moved to by the ocean currents. Nice. Look at it. See, this is all that I put me. See that? It just spreads by the rhizome. See this? Just coming up. You could take this out. You know, I bet I bet these are all the same plant. Oh, that's kind of deranged. That little doll right there. I bet at least, you know, you probably only got two or three plants here. Maybe only one. You'd pull out this whole net of rhizomes. Rhizomes and, and underground stems. Beach going in the Anthropocene. How often you get the turds washing up on a beach? Huh? Turds and garbage. That's what it was like on Lake Michigan, you know. Every time the uh, fecal coliform count will get too high, they have to close the beach. But you can still go in, you know, just uh, make sure you take a shower afterwards. You know, it's so hard for me to just not think of people puking when I'm uh, when I'm on the island, you know. It's just, I don't know, what a, just, people just get too hammered here. It's just a place of indulgence and hedonism. Anyway, here's another, another uh, dune P. Vigna luteola from the low latitude tropical areas. You got to really crack those open. Look at how different those stamens look. All right, I mean, obviously it's a yellow flower. That's a big difference from that cannabis we were just looking at, but the stamens are different too. Oh, it's raining, that's nice. And, uh, and there's that calyx. And then of course the leaves don't really get too big. Somewhat diminutive compared to uh, that big bastard over there, that, that cannabis. Okay, stepping into the bush a little bit again. Here you go, here's a plant that colloquially known as sea oat, Spuniola paniculata. Okay, basically it's just uh, it's just a grass with uh, those, uh, those fruits, those are the fruits right there, the seeds, uh, just looking uh, looking like an oat head. And you can see there's the uh, there's the actual leaves of the plant. All right, this grows on the coast, all the way up, uh, you know, from from South Texas, northern Mexico, up there to Delaware. And who wants to go to Delaware? Not me. No offense to anybody who actually lives in Delaware. I think I think my friend Stabby D and her husband Jake both live in Delaware. No, 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 no. They live, they live in, they live in Jersey. I'm sorry. I've been out of the Northeast so long. I confused Delaware and New Jersey. No offense to anyone who lives there. See, that's just. This is just the infructescence. Infructescence just means a bunch of fruits aggregated together. It's a compound fruit. All right. Look, 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 look at a chaff. Bunch of seeds. Okay. But this is an important plant because it helps stabilize the dunes. Okay. And it never grows too far inland. And it's super tolerant of the salt spray and the drunken frat boys, and people puking on it, and nutrient-poor sand, and heat, and drought, etc. Don't ask Stabby D how she got that name. Anyway, Uniola paniculata, you can see it's a beautiful, a beautiful grass. Normally when you see grasses that are so beautiful, they tend to be invasive. This is one's actually a native, huh? You could, you could put that in your yard, huh? If you got a nice beach house somewhere. Here's a Thymophila of the Marigold tribe. So we look at those, uh, the size of that involucre are nice. And you got some glands on there. You got those orange, you got orange glands on that one. Maybe not, not as prominent on this one. Some of the thymophilus, you got orange glands on those involucres. And the foliage is very pungent. It, it smells very, I mean, I like the way it smells, but uh, obviously why the plant's producing those compounds that smell good to us is to keep uh, the uh, micro herbivory at bay, as well as to fight, uh, to a lesser extent, maybe to fight fungi. But uh, all of the marigold tribe smells pretty good all right so mesquite itself the genus prosopis uh, especially prosopis glandulosa is a pretty variable uh can be a pretty variable genus all right some of them get upwards to 30 feet tall uh the same species can get you know it'll grow in a dryer it only tops out at like three or four feet this this species prosopis reptans variety cinerascens tops out at about 10 inches you can see there's a little screw bean fruit it's basically just a curly cute pea pod. Just a pea pod that curls up. You still got that pinnate foliage, distinctive giveaway for the pea family. And then uh, there's a flower about to go off. An inflorescence, excuse me. A bunch of tiny flowers. 
about to go off. They haven't quite opened yet. All right, so this is basically a dwarf mesquite, and uh, let's see if we can crack one of these open nice. Yeah, there you go. So bugs got a lot of the seeds in there, but you twist it enough, you got a couple seeds in there. Anyway, this thing doesn't get too big. Uh, it's actually an adaptation for you. You can see it's got some spines on there too, just like uh, it's much larger in stature uh, cousin. But, uh, you know, it tops out at, you know, like I said, 10 to 16 inches and grows on this nutrient poor sand, hot as balls and very humid in the, uh, in the summer. And, uh, you know, you can see, I wonder, I wonder how big that root is down there. Though. I bet you got quite a stocky root down there. But uh, there's obviously been selection for it remaining small in stature. Look at it. You get this. This uh, grass seems to be doing well. And you got a little heliotropium over there too. Anyway, this is a close relative of Grindelia, and it smells like it too. Very glandular, very sticky. This is Ray Jacksonia phyllocephala. Apparently named after some botanist named Ray Jackson. Not only are they named, you know, not only got people naming species after a fucking person. You got people naming entire genera after people too. Come on, really? You know, you couldn't do better than that. You couldn't get more creative than that. Whatever. Anyway, there's uh, there's that, uh, there's the stem, there's the leaves. You got a very, uh, look at the leaf margins on there. Very serrate. Little teeth. Can you see the, uh, the involucrator? Look at the glands. Oh my God. Look at the multi-seriate phyleries. Not just one or two series of phyleries. You got a few in there. There's the flower head. Got a guy in there, what's that guy doing? Looks like some sort of damn math, okay? Very distinct shape to those style branches too. Again, amazing how much variation on a theme you can get, whether it's a pea flower or a member of the sunflower family. There's all the, all kinds of little nuances you can get in there that uh, dictate how things have evolved and how closely they're related. So you gotta pay attention to the style branches, you gotta pay attention to the phyleries, etc. Smells very good though. Oh. God, and again, those glands probably reduce the micro herbivory as well as, uh, you know, you got things juicy enough, you help them uh, fight transpiration a little bit in the hot climates. Oh, this is a fucking banger. This is a banger. Look at this, another beautiful fabid. You think I'm going to freak out all the geriatrics at the birding center? They got a birding center here, okay? You know, I know I like to take you guys places that are more wild, but I'm kind of stuck within the confines of human infrastructure right now. You know, I like that. I like seeing old white people at the birding center. If they're looking at birds, they're not getting into QAnon, you know, they're staying out of other trouble, all right? They're not reading conspiracy theories or, you know, uh, figuring out ways to talk shit on people they have no clue about either, so it's good. It keeps them out of the online chat boxes, the online conspiracy theories, etc. They're staying out of these, like, uh, you know, racist right-wing circles that uh, old white people tend to be more prone to falling into. No offense to any of you in the audience right there. I'm right there with you. I love everybody. I'm just, I'm just fucking running right my mouth. Okay, we're just doing free flow. Anyway, Sephora Tomentosa. Okay, because it's Tomentos. You see that pinnate foliage? Look at the sheen on it. You prick. Look at it. Look at, look at that. That's even without the flowers, which are bangers unto themselves. You got some beautiful vegetative parts. Look at that. All, all uh. Kind of like a chalky blue, chalky white, just covered in the fuss. Take a close up look at it. Look at look at all the, look at the velvet on it. Look at the velvet on those leaves. Again, an adaptation to the hot and the dry. All right, okay. Because though it is humid as hell, it's they're growing on sand. It drains really readily. Probably quite salt tolerant too, because you get just salt vapor coming off uh, coming off the ocean to my right a little bit. And then there's those there's those fruits. Okay, very distinct look to those fruits right there. Ah, oh, what a goddamn banger. I love this plant. Let's get up close and look at those, uh, look at those flowers. Looks like somebody was, was somebody else mutilating flowers here? What happened? Was there a beetle or something in there? Because normally those stamens will be within that keel, but they're not. See that? Ah, oh, they're just poking out. See these, so they're maturing from the bottom up as well yeah look see you got someone someone's removing someone's coming here one of these damn insects coming here and rolling up those petals and stealing them maybe some little damn bee who thinks he's being a wise ass oh what a banger of a plant you gotta love legumes huh and you got the rhizobium bacteria in those roots fixing the nitrogen because they're growing on the nutrient poor sand and what the shit thank you for not being into QAnon Oh, uh, yeah, see, there's those seats. Probably need some scarification to get them going. Just rub them between two pieces of 60-grit sandpaper. 
for a while you know you could actually use like an orbital sander or some shit maybe not though even too maybe just maybe just hot water treatment who knows you got the andropogon tenuous spatheus in the background got like little rockets little brown rockets oh here we go here's a member of one of my favorite genera of pea in the central united states this is baptisia bracteata look at those leaves so glabrous waxy and smooth well, maybe not smooth. Well, not their most. Now they got some scales on there. See, look at the texture of that leaf right there. Glabrous stem. And uh, and then there's those flowers. Banger flowers. Banner wings and key. Look how big the banner is on that. See, it looks like two. It looks like two, uh, two petals in the back there. Banner wings and keel. There's that calyx. Ah! And pull that down. Let's see. Check out the stamens in there. See, pull that keel down. There's those juicy stamens. Ah, oh, juicy. The nectaries deep inside that perianth. Deep at the base of those petals. It looks like I knocked one of the, Is that pollen or I just knock an entire goddamn anther off? I don't know. And then, of course, you got the style in there, too. See, that? just a little green crescent moon poking out, which is uh, basically connected to the ovary, to the legume, that this will mature into. And look, you got a bract subtending a little leafy bract subtending the pedicel of every flower how about that baptizia is an incredible genus uh, quite uh, quite a bit of variation in it and uh again it's just it's you can see it's just fixing just coming up perennial from that root down there just fixing the nitrogen in the soil down there nice and right over here is last year's plant and it looks like you still got some seed in there. Oh yeah, you got quite a bit. So I'm gonna collect this, put a little drug baggie to make the cops horny whenever they stop me next, and uh, try and grow some. Again, I, I try, most members of the legume family have pretty thick seed coats, so I'm gonna try and take some sandpaper to these. May not be necessary, but I'll do it. Hey, look, you got the hilum on there. See that little black spot on the seed where the point of attachment, see that? Like a little, like you get on a bean where the placenta attaches to the seed. Okay, I guess we can end it here. Look at all the nice mud. The tide is out right now on the bay. You got a couple interesting plants here, right? One of the plants known colloquially as mangrove. This is black mangrove, Avicennia germanans, or the acanthaceae. Those are the pneumatophores, the roots to help it get the oxygen. Basically, little aerial roots, pneumatophores with the P. All right, mangrove is like algae. It's a polyphyletic term. It doesn't mean they're related. It doesn't mean they're all, certainly not all the same plant just means they basically you know grow in salt water have a high salt tolerance and uh you know don't get too big act as kind of a barrier to prevent the you know waves from crashing up against the shore and with this shit uh and then this right here is a betis maritima pretty odd uh, one of two species in a family batesia in the order brassicale same order as mustards you got opposite leaves right there kind of succulent and uh, obviously uh, it's a halo fight, so it can tolerate the salt because it's growing here in a brackish water. Again, uh, acant they say being in the same order as Lamiaceae. Back to this, uh, this, uh, or back to this, uh, the the mangrove. Acant they say is the family order Lamiales. Same same order as the sages and the mints. You got those opposite leaves, among others. Look at the nice underside. Oh, you got some. What is it? You got some damn uh, aphids on there. Looks like they're creating quite a mess. Is that aphids or scale or what the shit? I don't know. I'm not a fucking plant pathologist. I should keep my mouth shut. It's an insect who's sucking the juices out. How's that? How's that for verbal eloquence, you prick? Anyway, alternating whorls of opposite leaves. And uh, interesting thing about the black mangrove, I mean, why they get around so much is because, uh, you know, they got the floating seeds. So you'll be on a like you'll see, you'll be on a beach on a, you know behind me. We're on a bay right now. The ocean's behind me on a strip of land. This little island, this little barrier island. Look at this fucking these these goddamn seabirds have so much attitude. It's unreal. You'll be on a beach and you'll see those seeds, depending on what time of year it is, washing up. All right, just looking like a little uh, a little olive or a pistachio, you know, already germinating. So that's how they get around. That's how they're so successful. What the shit is going on there? All kinds of weird crabs and with this shit. Probably a lot of bird shit too. Anyway, that's all I got for you this afternoon. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, you know, I always come, whenever I'm on Padre Island, I always think of, uh, I think they just get a bad rap because of all the uh, drunken morons coming here to party, you know? But obviously, just like anywhere else, 
All right, the human world is an infinitesimally small piece of the larger picture. We always forget that, all right? Got to look at the bigger picture. Got to think about what the native plants are, what the local ecosystem looked like for millions of years before all these fucking jadrules showed up, you know? You know, I always like thinking about that. At least it makes me feel a little bit better. Anyway, that's all I got for you this uh, evening. Have a good rest of your night. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Here's a, here's a species of... Uh, that species of mangrove I was showing you, there's the seed, Avicennia germinans. You can see it's already got the radical coming out of there. Uh, and uh, there's the cotyledon still inside that seed. So uh, anyway, it just, I just was walking along the beach with the dogs and uh, we found this. Jack found some nasty shit to get into as he usually does. Luckily it wasn't human shit, it was just, it looked like a dead jellyfish or something. But uh, anyway, so there you go. So that's how they do it. That's how they get around. That's how you get the whole pan-tropical thing occurring.